Oh, training camps are back, and you know what that means. That means football is here, fantasy football is here, and you're going to head into your drafts this year more excited than ever for football. But here's the thing. You want to go in ready to win, and not all rankings are the same. Everybody goes into a draft with some sort of rankings out there, even if you're just using the platform ADP. But the Ultimate Draft Kit tiered-based rankings are proven to be the most successful setup for a fantasy championship. We have top five accuracy year after year after year. Check it out. Get your leg up at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Huh? It's football time. Yeah! Yes! <laughs> Let's go. I apologize for the pitch. It was too excited. <laughs> not excited enough, Mike. You apologize. For nothing. For nothing. Yeah, well, what am I doing? I've I've lost Mike, my way. <laughs> Mike hasn't been into the on, on the studio yes. microphone in it's a little Mike while. It's Mike right time. <laughs> it's Goodness. <laughs> Oh, uh, prayers, thoughts with those of you that careened off the road in the midst of that. That was spectacular, though. We are excited. <sighs> Welcome in to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike, the fantasy hitman, is very much here today. Indeed. Jason Moore, present, accounted for. I'm Andy Holloway. It's Tuesday, July 28th. It's football time. And uh, Mike is doing a little... It's, it's NFC East time. Uh, Blake Jarwin shimmy. He's, whoa, he's whoa. Wearing, wearing a Blake Jarwin shirt. Wait, you you, to, is it a spoiler? Yes. We had, we had to build him up. But yes, it's Blake Jarwin time, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's one of four of those oh, shirts. Oh, this is one of one. This is the, the only one this ever is the printed. This is the only Blake Jarwin shirt ever printed. Is but he doing it, a stiff arm in that? Prob I, probably. He's, just, he's stiff arming all the haters. <laughs> just like you. <laughs> Just like you, Mike. Uh, we're very excited. We got an NFC East divisional breakdown on the show today. Some news to get into. Great quick question. Jason said it at the top. Make sure you check out ultimatedraftkit.com. We've partnered with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital again this year to donate $1 from every UDK sale to St. Jude. And uh, this is the best Ultimate Draft Kit we've ever released. Uh, new features this year. Uh, more stuff planned for August. Just going to be released into the into the draft kit. So make sure you check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. We're live all week long. Yes. Answering questions. The time is now for you to get going. Get ready for your drafts. Mm -hmm. I know that there is some doubt out there. There's some worry, some concern, a lot going on in the world, obviously. But uh, the NFL is here. Training camps have opened. We are under 50 days before we kick off for 2020. And, uh, you know, it's time to make up a little time. If you haven't been diving in yet. Get that engine going. Let's go. <laughs> there you go. Get that, <laughs> get that hype train going. Now, you want the – that's the hype train you want. <laughs> Not the – You got to be very careful because you could get uh, – oh, What? You're trying to pull it up? No, I think you okay. do, I think uh, Al Borland managed to delete the, the, the dangerous – The fear train? Yeah, the fear train. All right. That was entertaining, though. Uh, what else is going on? Last chance to apply for one of our writer positions. You can go to footclanhelp.com. We're looking for two more writers. Two to three. We'll see if we find the right people. And uh, fans of the show, we're only announcing it on the show. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're kind of dialed in with the fantasy footballers and what the show is about, interested in writing, footclanhelp.com to apply. Here's your quick question. What position battle are you most excited to monitor in training camp? Training camp getting started today. What are you paying attention to? I I have I have a a, a list. You have a of list? Yeah, I've got several things I'm looking for this year. But if I have to give it to one, the number one thing that I'm I'm curious about because uh, you know I, I think we're going to get media reports talking about the major events going on at at camp. And I want to know who is the wide receiver one for the Houston Texans. 
Is it that's a really going good one. to be Will Fuller because right. he has the experience? Is it going to be that's a great one. Brandon Cooks traded for uh, you know after the the Hopkins departure because whoever that is is it going to be Randall Cobb? Nope. <laughs> but sure, I mean we that can question watch is being asked by others, not that, you. Well, the question could be asked and answered by me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so who is? The wide receiver one. Who's the target leader for that team? I think that's something that, you know, a lot of these training camps and beat writers, they're not going to know. But when you watch an offense work, they're going to be able to tell who he's going yes. to, who he's developing chemistry with, or who he already has it with in the case of Will Fuller. So I, I'm curious because right now I find myself drafting neither of the the Will Fuller or Brandon Cooks because I don't have a Now, clear. neither is – that, but that defines two wide receivers, that you're not putting Randall Cobb well, into the discussion. So, ironically, I do, Any draft, of them. I do draft Randall Cobb. I, I draft Randall Cobb from time to time because In he's, all his Ronald Jones drafts. <laughs> he's free at the end of the draft, so I don't think right. he's going to be the number one for the team, but he's actually the one guy I have drafted. The, the middle round guys of Will Fuller and Brandon Cooks, I don't grab either of them. Because I'm Could you make an argument confident. that none of those three wide receivers have ever proven themselves to be a number one in the National Football League? I mean, Brandon Cooks would be the only one you could look Brandon at Cooks and say— Brandon Cooks is pretty close. He, he, he came close. I would say well, he— Fuller never has. Uh, Randall Cobb never has. It's very interesting to think about it. I almost selected that positional battle, Jason. The reason I didn't is I don't know if I will know enough by the end of camp. I feel like— I, I think about Deshaun Watson and the fact that if he finds one of these guys that he loves to throw the ball to, that will be very valuable for fantasy. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I won't know in training camp. Brandon Cooks, it, it's funny because he was so bad last year with the injury and, and then kind of disappeared. It was the wide receiver 62. You almost forget he was a top 15 wide receiver the previous four seasons. He was 14th, 9th, 12th, 13th. I don't forget that. Well, there you go. So he's he so is. You who should I would, draft him then. He's who I would make my bet on now. But I want to wait and see with training camp if that appears to be the the number one wide receiver. I think the running back battles are at top of mind. Jonathan Taylor and Marlon Mack, Clyde edwards alaire Damian Williams, and then I'll even throw in a little wild card camp battle: AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones. If AJ Dillon starts getting on the field more than we expect, that's something that will throw uh, question marks into the brains sure. of fantasy uh, football players everywhere when they're going into their drafts and they're trying to appropriate value to Aaron Jones based on what he did last well, time. Well, it's, it's goal line. Like A.J. Yes. Dillon could do nothing. He could, he could just come in and uh, was, was that uh, on Chicago? Michael Bush? Yeah. Yes. Am I remembering oh, yeah. that right? With yes. the, the Matt Forte years? A.J. Villain. For oh, Aaron, for Aaron oh, Jones. oh good. no. Oh, he's totally A.J. Villain if he's a vulture. Yeah. Yeah, oh, he could do some bad things. So good. That's a good one. I, and, and I think he'd be into that. Like If oh. I'm A.J. Dillon and the people are calling me that, pff, yeah. I'm, I'm in on that we one. We have not yet had a supervillain as part of the <laughs> fantasy footballer's experience. <laughs> this could be really good for our platform here. Yeah, this is key for 2020. Mike, what do you think? Washington. Washington's running backs. What is happening over there? Yeah. Does Peterson make the team? Does uh oh crap. Antonio Gibson actually get running back right. reps? Yeah, and uh, Bryce Love, Darius Guys, <laughs> you, you yeah, Guys, Guys, who is now cleared for football. And look, he is Guys is the presumed starter. Wait, even Peyton by Barber's me. there too. Yes, does yes. Peyton Barber make the team? That's what I mean. Like, there's so many, so many dudes in the running back room. So many dudes, which I mean, generally means if you can see through it, if you can figure exactly. that out, there's a lot of value there. None of those players will be, none of their ADP will match the production of one of those guys that emerges but it is very common for a you know a running back who has a breakout year to come from a group that is murky to start the yes. year some nebulous uh running back core that you're just not sure of that's where breakouts that's one of the things that you can look for so i i agree with you completely watching the health of guys and watching the uh, trust of gibson as a rookie and you know all, all of the running backs do they Get rid of the the elder it's be statements. Interesting. And I think Peterson's gone, and Peterson I think Geis is the guy. That's that's my early thoughts. But Gibson could get some work. I know Mike would love that. Yes. News and notes from around the league. 
in generally outstanding, positive, fun, happy news, Alex Smith has been cleared yes. for full football, football activity by his surgical team. He's been placed on the pup list, but he can be taken off of that anytime before the season. Correct. It's an impressive accomplishment. It's unbelievable, man. An act of will by Alex Smith to be back to where he is. If you saw the documentary on him... I couldn't. I couldn't you do watch, it. He did, could, you, did you watch the whole thing? I, I saw enough... Oh, I don't know, man. There is. I, I had to there is, stop. At there is certain definitely points. a scene where you go, "That's not a human leg," and it, and here he is. Yes, the the fact of him being cleared. We and uh, Ron Rivera, coach of Washington, has said if Alex is here, he's in the plans. We're going to figure it out. And honestly, like, like you know, uh, the amazing scenario where where Alex Smith is back on the football field as a starting quarterback, sure it exists, but Alex Smith being there is great for Dwayne Haskins. Number one, I mean, you get the, the competitive push, but Alex Smith's a really good quarterback, and to have him in the room being able to mentor Dwayne Haskins talk, and, and Smith is a guy who will do that. He's not going to Brett Favre stand in the corner and mope while someone else is playing. He's going to help Haskins get better. I agree. And if Alex Smith, like we've seen what healthy Alex Smith can do on the field. And we saw what Case Keenum did for Terry McLaurin last year right. at times. And I think we, you know, the last we saw Alex, Alex Smith, it was a valuable, uh, it was valuable to be the top wide receiver for him. Yes. And, and ironically, I mean, this is, this is a, an outside shot, but if you've got an IR spot in your dynasty leagues, you know, we were talking about this today, you can pick them up yeah. and, and throw them on your IR and you know, and then pick whoever you drop back up, and you just have a free chance. Uh, because I, I do think you know, I it's hard for me to imagine he's actually healthy, but here he is. You know, I was I was watching a, a Stefania Bell interview because she's like been really really tied. Stefania Bell, injury expert from ESPN, she helped with the documentary and everything. Uh, and she had said something about one of the surgeons works with Washington. It's like there's already a connection here of, of Alex Smith moving forward with maybe trying to come back. It's amazing. It's amazing. And and I wish him well and hope he can stay healthy. Yeah. Darius guys uh, cleared for the 2020 season. We just talked about the running back room in Washington. Dalvin cook played uh <laughs> ping pong with our hearts <laughs> over the course of the weekend. There were literally four reports. There was, <laughs> There was Mike Zimmer saying Dalvin Cook told him he's going to report. There was the agent refuting it. Then there was a clarification that, no, it wasn't Dalvin Cook directly to Mike Zimmer. It was Dalvin Cook to one of the coaches to Zimmer. Then there was the agent refuting it. I would be a fool to try to predict exactly what's going to happen moving he's forward. He's going to be there. I think he's going to be there. We talked about the $50,000 fine situation. There is one little variable in play with the contract. And that is the opt-out clause and the option to kind of leverage that opt-out clause against the club. Because Dalvin Cook could take the opt-out for the season in the, the COVID opt-out. And by doing so, he would basically be pressing pause on his career and he'd have to come back and play under a, a, a lower amount of money next year or hold out next year. That being said, it's a leverage point for him because the team would be without Dalvin Cook services in a year that they want to threaten for the playoffs. So that is one area where it could go sideways. I think we all expect him to be back in camp and are drafting him. I want to be there. Yeah. One of the things that the NFL got through in their negotiations was that the opt out cannot be a holdout in the sense that there, if he opts out there, they are not allowed to renegotiate contract. Right. So it would be a full pause and he'd have to try again next year. Right. Um, Raheem Mostert. Hey, -oh. the 49ers have restructured his contract. And uh, everyone's happy now. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's happy. His agent came out and said he's happy. Most of it is in San Francisco. And if you have him on your dynasty team, if you have him on your... Uh, you're happier. Keeper, <laughs> you're much happier that he's in the Shanahan system yep. where we saw great success. It's where he belongs, and it's where he's going to be very valuable for fantasy. It's where he's uh, home. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we all knew that he was not getting traded when he requested a trade. <laughs> yes. And then uh, the other big piece of news related to COVID-19 in 2020 season, Ian Rappaport talking about the fact, that, confirming the fact that the NFL will create a temporary IR spot for COVID-19. 
Now, the the caveat here is that players can be placed on it if they test positive for COVID-19 or if they are quarantining because they've had close contact with an infected person. If they fall into either of those categories, the club is required to place them on the reserve COVID-19 list. For fantasy football owners, what this means as of today, at least the way I interpret it, is we won't know that a player is conclusively COVID-19 positive and might miss two, three, four weeks. This player could be quarantined for two or three days as they get a test back, as they figure out whether, because they're going to quickly try to pull anybody right. who's had close contact away from the rest of the team as a precautionary measure. And so, you know, we're going to do our best on our end on the website to try to figure out a way to get you guys this information and follow along with some sort of chart or, you know, what's going on during the year. But just don't believe that every player placed on that list is gone for two or three weeks is my point. For example, Vikings placed first-round wide receiver Justin Jefferson on uh, the reserve COVID-19 list. We do not know if he has indeed tested positive for COVID-19 and will be out for, you know, an extended period through training Keyshawn Vaughn as well. Oh, I had not heard Keyshawn that. Keyshawn Vaughn has also been placed on the reserve. Oh, my Ronald Jones. Love where this. was the Where was the source for that one, Brooksy? Uh, one sec. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, these that, that players, be, that's breaking. It was, for Dal- us. It was Dalvin Cook. <laughs> <laughs> the, these players, um, you know, we we don't know how long it will be. However, we can say, knowing that they were placed on that list, it's not good for them. It's not good for rookies to miss Correct. training camp in an already truncated off season. So if you're between, you know, Justin Jefferson well, and Jalen Rager, does this be- No, it doesn't. It doesn't because I don't know how long Justin Jefferson is going to be on there and his camp doesn't start at the same time that the Chiefs and I believe the Texans camp starts. So um once time has started to be missed, then sure, that conversation is is worthwhile. You don't want to miss time, no doubt about it. Um we have a source on that one, Rick Stroud. Uh, so we'll see. There'll be more players popping up, and there may be more opt-outs. We haven't had huge uh, numbers of opt-outs as of this recording, which is late Monday afternoon, but we'll report those to you as well, and we're all going to be following along. And I, again, another chance to encourage you, make your league as flexible as possible for what's taking place so that you can throw players onto the IR and not have it disrupt. Lastly, Adam Shaheen has been traded for a conditional six-round pick. Whoops. What was he, a Former second rounder? Correct. Yes. By the Chicago Bears who have now signed Jimmy Graham and gotten rid of Adam Shaheen? Yes. And gotten rid of Trey Burton? Yes. So they, even though they have a lot of tight ends, they've also managed to get rid and, of a lot of tight ends. Well, and then they spent a second round pick on Cole Komet. So, yeah. So yeah, they, no, they, they still have plenty. It actually does. I mean, this this move is... It's Jimmy Graham, It's man. helpful, yeah. <laughs> it's Jimmy Graham. It, ju- jagged little pill. Just, just accept it. <laughs> It's Jimmy Graham. He's the starting tight end. Swallow it down. Yes. You aren't going to like it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we get into the NFC East breakdown, I want to thank WGU for sponsoring today's show. You won't stop working until you reach your goals, and neither will WGU. That's why they've created an online university for people whose ambition never rests. Sounds like someone I know. Me? Myself. Oh. WGU's innovative competency-based learning model was designated and designed specifically to fit the lives of busy adults. They're a nonprofit offering online bachelor's and master's degrees in business, IT education, and nursing. You can move through the material you already know and spend time learning what you don't, which means the faster you demonstrate what you know, the faster you finish. It's about half the cost of most other online universities, so you can graduate with far less debt or none at all. Get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers. That's wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers. Footland Summer is in full action. Longtime sponsor of the show, Manscaped. They are helping us stay fresh. They have all the right tools. They just keep coming out with new stuff all the time. Like it was really exciting. They already had the best body trimmer on the market, and now they have an unveiled the shears 2.0 nail kit it's a perfect add-on uh to the lawnmower 3.0 i just just got that i got them too it's nice it's an incredible handy package it's it's got all the things you need for your nails you've got uh like a a slash tipped tweezer rounded point scissor fingernail clippers of course and then there's a nail file in there as well and it's really compact it's it's gonna go right along with you 
And always remember about the Perfect Pack is 3.0 kit that comes with the Lawnmower 3.0, the best body trimmer on the market. Like I said, it's helping you stay fresh. And you can get, look, a limited time, subscribers can get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the patented high-performance Manscaped Boxer Briefs. You've you got to check this deal out. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code Footballers 20 summer is here. It's time to manscape. Let's get divisional. All right. The Philadelphia Eagles kick off our NFC East divisional breakdown. Last year, they managed to win the division at nine and seven. They needed some uh, <laughs> trimming and clipping and. Uh, manscaping of that season to make it look anything like this should not even be allowed it well, really I, shouldn't is it more of a testament to fighting through challenges that they managed to get there yes versus dwelling on the fact that they were five and five and one score games they were um negative three in turnover margin they managed to they, get through everyone else failing around them yeah i mean they they beat washington twice the jets miami the giants twice so that's six of their nine wins against some not great competition. Yeah. But you play the schedule you're handed. It's true. And you also play with the wide receivers that you have left. Right. And, and with that, the offensive line you have left. That was the issue. I mean, the, the Eagles dealt with so much injury last year, uh, similar to the year before when it comes to uh, you know what this offense was able to do. They changed several times through the year. You know, it, w what you thought they were – Changed a couple times. I expect that things will be brighter for the Eagles this season. Well, did you hear the quote, Jason, from head coach Doug Peterson? Oh, please. For He was talking about his wide receiver, Alshon Jeffrey. He says he's in a really good spot, but then would not say when he thinks he'll be ready to practice or play. Did but he's <laughs> in a good spot. Unless that spot like, is like, the pup. I say like a recliner, Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it seemed like more of the same in the way the news was breaking this off season, and we've got we've got questions on this offense. I was very bullish about the Eagles last year, and the injuries disrupted a lot of things. They were top fifteen in all offensive categories. Defense started to figure things out over the very back half of the year, but it was a struggle. This off season, they added Marquise Goodwin, who maybe fantasy owners forgot about, dealt with injuries throughout his career. They added Jalen Rager. They added Jalen Hurts, a uh, quarterback in the second round that they might be able to use in some kind of gadget plays and um, special circumstances. They lost Jordan Howard. And here we are kind of, you know, I think at the top of everybody's mind is what are we going to have in Carson Wentz? And uh, what are we going to have at the wide receiver position really? in Philadelphia top, to start my this top season? My question is Miles Sanders from this offense. But where, where do you want to start? Well, I think everybody – is going to start Miles Sanders in the fantasy leagues. It's they, maybe sure, the projection of where he'll end up. I'm not saying there's not questions, but, but that's the question is right now you have to draft Miles Sanders. We can start by talking about like, him. To me, because he's the first one being drafted right now in best ball, the running back eight. He's going at the back of the first round. It has happened. Miles found his way in there. What are we going to get? Because you know, last year to end the season, he was a monster averaging over 18 touches per game, nearly averaging 100 yards per game. Weeks 11 through 16, he was the running back three behind only Christian McCaffrey and Zeke. And yet we have, like, that scenario only occurred because of injuries to the running back position. Like, of all the injuries that the Eagles dealt with, Doug Peterson and his usage of the running back by committee, the hand was forced. Will that continue moving forward with Miles Sanders? He was a second-round pick, very excellent running back. Or is Doug Peterson really just in his DNA a running back by committee guy and we're not going to see Miles Sanders touch the ball 19 times a game? I don't think, he, I don't think that's in his DNA. I do not. I, I argued for Miles Sanders at the beginning of last year that when you invest that pick, which was the highest draft pick on a running back since LaShawn McCoy, you are – you're you're looking at this guy as to be a centerpiece of your offense. 
You can say his hand was forced, but if Miles Sanders did not succeed in that role, his hand would not have been forced to play Miles Sanders in that as much as he did. Sanders succeeded in the opportunity. That gives him yes. some credit heading into the new year, and we don't have a reason to believe that he can't be a centerpiece of this offense. Well, with you the had because Jordan Howard was the starter in the middle of the season because Jordan Howard was playing better, and then he got injured. Then you throw in the offseason news that they didn't call him out by name, but it's, there was a lot of smoke that Carlos Hyde would be joining this team. And then as soon as he was signed, Peterson came out and so said, what do you ah, believe? we missed out on... I what do you believe about Miles Sanders? If you know, Because you're right. You can make any narrative you want here. That's the problem. He was. Yes. They didn't have uh, ancillary pieces to, to rely on, so they relied on Miles Sanders. He succeeded for fantasy and for the Eagles. But what do you believe? I lean the side that he is going to be excellent for fantasy uh, purposes, and he will be kind of a, a three-down player treated as that you know as as much as guys are treated that way these days but he's his range of outcomes is so wide that drafting him at the back of the first is a very scary proposition that I have not found myself I, I haven't been able to do it yet Jay where are you on Miles Sanders are you taking him as of as a foundational running back one at that part of the draft? So usually in that part of the draft, you're deciding between guys, you know, essentially like Kenya Drake or Miles Sanders. And I, I'm on the Drake side, but I don't blame anyone for taking Sanders there. You you talk about last season, it was the opportunity around him, the injuries around him, you know, Jordan Howard going down and all these other uh, players, their issues are what caused Miles Sanders to be used in a three down capacity, but that's the situation we're heading into the year with. All right. Right? Like it's him and Boss and Scott. So he's going to get the work. It does it doesn't even matter if it's in Doug Peterson's DNA. If it, if Doug Peterson is like, no, we're a committee back, it's still going to be a heavy timeshare advantage to Miles Sanders because they don't have the roster. You know, it's Corey Clement might make the roster or Chris Warren. Like these guys are not eating into the to the volume. My issue is I do not think that the targets that were there at the end of the year. You know, you, you said he was, uh, you know, high right. running back three or something. I think that was full PPR. Half PPR, he was like the running back nine. Okay. And all of the all of the wide receivers that went down to injury and they're throwing to Greg Ward, that was when you had an 88 target pace for Miles Sanders. I don't have him with that many receptions, uh, but I do think he's going to – he's going to get 225 carries, and that's enough because he's talented. So I – I I don't think that his floor is as low as you know you saw you talk about the range of outcomes. I think he's actually pretty safe. Well, and players improve. I mean, I think the sure. reason that his draft capital is where it's at is people are trying to find the next Christian McCaffrey, the guy that can make the additional leap into being a dual yes, threat, certainly. top five fantasy type of player. I don't know if I buy that for this season, but I, I coming into the league, I mean, Miles Sanders. Uh, in the in the shadow of Saquon Barkley out of Penn State, right? Dynamic player. He came along quickly in his rookie season, and uh, you, but you're paying a high price. Carson Wentz uh, being drafted as the QB nine right now. He dealt with the zero wide receiver situation it's, in a big way. I just don't even know how to feel about Carson Wentz. Like he's it's fine. I love Carson Wentz. You love him? I do. I think he's a phenomenal quarterback. Like in real life, I think he's great for fantasy. He's always been very good. At the end of last year, you were very disappointed. At the end, you know, the second were half. Were you ever of, really happy last year? Oh, certainly. Yeah. I mean, you look at the first, uh, if, if you remember I, how. I remember the front run, and he was just like always on the edge of being a top 10 quarterback. Yeah. That's, he was always inside being a top 10 quarterback. He was a top 10 quarterback. Uh, but I mean, that, that's, and, and that's keeping you afloat. You, you need to have that, but. That's not winning you anything. That's just not losing you anything. Well, but as a late round quarterback drafter, I think if I can guarantee my guy every week is a top ten quarterback, All right, that's I am super happy to have uh when last last year the first six games, five of those first six games, he was a top ten quarterback. The the thing with Carson Wentz to me is what made him an MVP candidate both for fantasy and for, for NFL purposes was he was able to combine some of that big playability with his legs. He was able to run and give you supplement his fantasy stats through the air, that hyper efficient year, with the ability to scramble and to get downfield and get you some of those, you know, all too valuable quarterback rushing yardage. 
he may start this year developing a rapport with Jalen Rager without Alshon Jeffrey, relying on Zach Ertz again, which you know has its pluses and minuses. Sure, you have a guy that you can throw the ball to a lot, but Zach Ertz is not a downfield type of tight end. He's a consistency tight end. You don't know what you have in Marquise Goodwin. Uh, maybe Miles Sanders gives you that upside. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting because of what this recipe has been for Philadelphia over the past couple of years with the injuries. I don't know if I'm in on Carson Wentz at the QB nine position, Mike, or do you like him at, at the end of the eighth round? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, uh, I guess, do you see the upside? Do you think that the upside is still is, there for Carson Wentz to be a top five quarterback? That's a good question. Uh, I guess it does exist. It's just so wild of his, his weapons, his, his wide receivers. They're not even being drafted as top 50 wide receivers. You have Rager, who's 52, he's the first one. We don't even know if he's going to start week one. Deshaun Jackson continues to be the best value at the wide receiver position for this team and in, pretty much in fantasy football. Are you drafting any of the wideouts? I mean, but like, I, I we, think, we like DJX late, but anybody else? No, I think it's DJX and, and, I mean, depending on Alshon Jeffrey's health, if he, you know, starts the year not on the pup, then he might be a good value. But it's not just the wide receivers here. You've got the Goddard, Ertz, tight end trifecta, yeah. and you've got two running backs, Boston Scott and Miles Sanders, who can catch the ball. So as a team, I think they are a good receiving team, even though the wide receiver core is murky at best but they they were 11th in passing yards per game despite all of the shortcomings despite lane johnson's injury despite the wide receivers so that's where it, you know taking a gamble on a pass catcher outside of zach Ertz, yeah seems like a wise thing to do if you can identify which player it is and it, you have to show throw uh jj arthega whiteside back into the mix yeah and he, greg ward i mean he, he could legitimately uh, arthega whiteside could start as dx yes I, yeah i totally agree you could be looking at yeah, whiteside and djx as the two starters so Djax is that pick for me. I guess to just put yeah, that on the board, he, he still he's is the for pick. me too. He has to when he's on the field, he's he's been great. I believe he was like eight percent of their touchdowns last year, having played one week. Yeah, That's Te shocking. technically two, but really one actual game. Okay, are there question marks around Ertz and Goddard? We need to discuss. I mean, we've talked about them. He's just I'm not drafting Ertz. Tight end four right now, fifth round pick. Yeah. <sighs> I, I have such a hard time drafting a lot of human and Holland during the Eagle chatter today. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, I, I have a lot of, I have a hard time drafting a middle round tight end, like a fifth round tight end just almost always fails. But here, if Ertz keeps dropping, you know, he was, he was obviously in the conversation with, with Kittle and Kelsey as the third. And Last now Mark year. Andrews has really taken that over. You could have him dropping to a value because I always talk about I want guys who get off to a hot start. And if Alshon is on the pup, then Ertz is going to get off to a strong, strong beginning of the year. I, he's still just, what, 29 years old, 30 years old. And I think last year, a little bit of the feeling you had was he went from that 116 for 1108 year down to, oh, dear, 88 receptions at the tight end position for 916 and six. Yeah. So he is slipping down to where he's more reasonable. At, at your tight end position, fifth round. We'll see. All right, the Dallas Cowboys, 8-8. Eight and eight. They went a an undesirable 1-6 in one-score games. Ugh, that's uh, gross. But you know how you fix that, right? Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy. <laughs> Wizard. Yes. And uh, goodbye, Jason Garrett. Hello, Mike McCarthy. Uh, they they underperformed last year. This was not the ex, you know, what we expected. We thought they'd potentially run away with that division, especially after the injuries that the Eagles suffered. Fifth in rushing yards per game, second in passing yards per game. That was the significant bullet point from the Dallas Cowboys offense last year. Kellen Moore, who has stayed in place as the mm -hmm. offensive coordinator, still there, transformed this offense, put more on Dak Prescott, and Dak did a lot with it. Yeah, Dak was fantastic. Like last year, he had the third most deep completions while being tied for fourth in adjusted deep completion percentage. Like so, he was going down the field and he was very successful. Tied with uh, he had eleven deep touchdowns. That's tied for second among the quarterback position. Like Dak was very very good, and he was very very good at going deep. And this is the one kind thing I will say during this segment about Amari Cooper. Ooh, I want to hear it. The toughest stretch for fantasy was 
pretty lined up when Amari Cooper got hurt and when Amari Cooper disappeared off the face of the map, like week 12 through 16, that's when Dak struggled at least a little bit. In other words, he likes him. Mm. I have a fun game about Amari Cooper. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no. All right, let's have it. By the way, Dang real quick it. question before <laughs> you play your game. Do you think that Russell Wilson looks at the difference between Dak two years ago and Dak last year and shows that template to his uh, general manager and to his head coach? <laughs> oh, he, he because should. Of, because of the, you know, Dak had averaged like 492 pass attempts, jumped up to 596. You've got this let Russ cook kind of hashtag out there if let russell wilson run this offense if the way russell he wants wilson to could be unleashed cool. we've if, wondered <laughs> we probably will be wondering until the end of time as you well. don't think they're gonna let it happen? no they okay. won't we'll talk about that eventually all right let's play a game oh um, all right we're gonna play a little game called amari cooper or Marvin Jones. Welcome to the game, Marvin Jones. And now, and look, this shout out Kyle the Borgogan. He's the one who's like, we got to play another game. And so he brought me some numbers. All right. Over the, past, be good. over the past couple years, the, so the 2017 to the 2019 season, that's the time range we're talking about. 17 and 19? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm dialed in. Receiving yards per game. Is it Amari Cooper who's averaging more? Is it Amari Cooper or Marvin Jones? These games aren't fair fights. They're not fair <laughs> fights. I will go Marvin Jones. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's actually Amari <laughs> Cooper. See, I had to start. <laughs> you, you sneaky snook. <laughs> oh. I had to start job on that one. All right. Uh, yards per reception. Who's making the big play happen? That one I would That's gotta be Marvin. genuinely say Marvin Jones. Oh, it is Marvin Jones. Excellent work, everybody. Yeah. Touchdowns, receiving touchdowns. That's, that's Amari Cooper or Marvin Jones. Well, that's got to be Marvin Jones, now, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna go. Marvin it is Jones. in fact Marvin Jones who has 23 compared to Amari Cooper's 22. Top 12 weeks. Amari Cooper. Oh no. Or no. Marvin Jones in the past couple we in past couple years more top 12 weeks. I'm now, one thing we know about Marvin Jones, despite how much of a value he always seems to be, is he is inconsistent. That's also been talked about <laughs> with Amari Cooper, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think he's setting us up for the I for the triple Marvin knockdown here. Yeah. It's Amari Cooper. He's got 11 compared to... Oh, there we go. 11 compared to Marvin Jones, 10. We, we got two more. Two more, and the last one is really a doozy that explains a lot of things. Okay, top 24 weeks. Top 24 weeks, um, Amari Cooper or Marvin Jones? I would still guess Cooper, if I'm being honest. Okay. I feel like you're going, Jones, <laughs> but I would assume that Amari Cooper has had more top 24 weeks. I'm not weeks. playing anymore. My answer is Marvin Jones. All right. All it, look, it's, it's Amari Cooper. He's had 16 to Marvin Jones, okay. 14. But now here's where the, those stats become really fun. Missed games. Who's missed more games? I guess it's... It's Mar Marvin, Marvin Jones yeah. at 10 compared to Amari Cooper's three. So seven extra games to be a top 12 wide receiver one more time and a top 24 receiver two more times than Marvin Jones. Thank you for playing. Everybody, this game is edition Jones, of hey. Amari Cooper versus Marvin Jones. Yeah, and Marvin Jones' award for participating is that you, he is a value in our ultimate draft game. Can I ask you this question? Over the last seven games when Amari Cooper was injured last year, how many of those games did he miss? None. That is correct. So I take those as injured games because he was hobbled. I think he just called Marvin Jones soft. That's the, what I think he just on the field. Ex okay. Well, then, then I will come back and say, how many of those games were you still playing Amari Cooper in your fantasy football lineup? Probably about and, half. Of and them. were you happy about? It? Probably about All half right. of them. Because right. we I'll leave you to, alone, Amari. We did get to a point last year where we talked about he's hobbled, and I'm not sure if you can start him or not. But I want to remind people the first 10 weeks before that injury, Amari Cooper was the wide receiver three behind only Michael Thomas and, shockingly, Mike Evans. Um, you know, Amari Cooper was the clear-cut number one, then was injured and hobbled and absolutely sucked the rest of the season. So the now, he's done this his whole career. Be great half the season, suck half the season. Uh, Mike, I think you are on point in – 
being fine, avoiding t- taking your loss if you're wrong on Cooper, but wanting to avoid the risk and the historical output that he, his inconsistency has provided, I am willing to take the risk on Amari Cooper this year based on what I saw for the first two thirds of the season before an injury and a hundred million dollars given to him. I think one interesting comparison for Amari Cooper might be the way we think about Tyreek Hill and the expectations we have on Tyreek Hill kind of change. We we know that Tyreek has monstrous, week winning, big time play games. Amari Cooper has done that over and over and over again at the NFL level. But I feel like we give Tyreek a little bit more of a pass on the consistency than we do Amari Cooper. Hmm. Maybe that's because Cooper has he's gone done out. It, he's done just, it so many times. And he's just disappeared. You know, it hasn't been the defense taking him away. It feels like it feels like he's been taking himself away in some right. of these games. And he's uh, Brooks just updated Amari Cooper and best ball is going in the fourth round. I'm I'm actually fine with that. He's going running back, running back. And He's then, the wide receiver 12. Marvin Jones is the wide receiver 37, <laughs> in case you want that game to continue. And also, uh, the, the game is not saying that Marvin no. Jones is Amari Cooper. No, it, it's more so saying that it's not saying to move Marvin Jones up. It's just to highlight the fact that expectations and reality aren't the same thing for Amari yes. Cooper sometimes. Michael Gallup, three rounds behind Amari Cooper. If you had to pick between them, are you taking Gallup, Mike? Yes, I would take Michael Gallup. But, uh, before this, I went and I was looking at all the wide receivers who in their sophomore season hit the 1,100-yard mark, and the hit rate of these wide receivers is unbelievable. Uh, you you go through the list of them, and the ones that busted is because they got hurt or because their quarterback went down essentially. like Basically, Corn Robinson was like the only guy who I could find where it's he just never really did a whole lot after that. So yes, I'm. Uh, a- after seeing the names on the list, the sophomore wide receivers who had 1,100 yards, I'm very bullish on Michael Gallup. Any chance the CD Lamb has a rookie impact, Jason? Uh, rookie impact, yeah. I mean, uh, you have Randall Cobb last year with 83 targets. I think you give 83 targets to CD Lamb and his ability to yards after the catch a billion times better than Randall Cobb, and he could he could take some to the house. He's not the rookie wide receiver that I'm targeting because he's not slotting into. A, a a role that could be a hundred plus targets over the course of the season. Uh, I would rather go with Jalen Rager or Jerry Judy. Um, Randall Cobb just dialed in. He would like you to change that from a billion to at least just a million. Okay, look, all hyperbole aside, I'll take my exaggeration away. It's one million times Thank better you. than Randall Cobb, and that now I'm being a billion, factually a billion is very insulting. If, for poor Randall Cobb. You know, it's just one of those things where the um, the ability of CeeDee Lamb to navigate traffic without ever being able to get tackled. I mean, obviously, this is college. But, you know, still compared to other college players, it's just it's an amazing ability. He was my number one wide receiver coming in. Unfortunately, he lands where he is the third on this roster. I would like Gallup. Um, we, we had a mock draft where I took Amari Cooper and Gallup. It was on accident, but it is telling. <laughs> It was telling that I didn't mean to do it, <laughs> but I was a genius <laughs> that both of these players are guys that I like where they are going and I'm fine drafting because Dak Prescott is legitimately great for fantasy. I think he's good for the NFL as well, but for fantasy, he's going to throw a lot. Him and Russell Wilson are the only two quarterbacks that have been quarterback ones for the last four years. It's going to keep happening. Yeah, I think we all love Dak this year. Mm hmm. Blake Jarwin yes, plays tight end for the Cowboys. All right. Yes, he Moving does. Moving on to the New York football giant. Blake Jarwin. All right. So here's here's my case for Blake is Jarwin. Your, is he on your my guys list, Mike? Are you willing to go go that Possibly. wild? Possibly. Go we'll that see. wild? We'll, we'll, we'll see. The, the nice thing is, I mean, he's if you punt tight end, here's why I think you should take Blake Jarwin. So last year he was 8.9 yards per target. And we know the story, though. Jason Witten was there. Jason Witten in his 6.4 yards per target. What? That's a bad number. <laughs> yes. Yes. Over the final two seasons, that's what Witten was putting up. And I get it. Jason Witten was there. If, if, if Blake Jarwin was ready, why did Jason Witten come back? Because a Hall of Fame tight end went to Jerry Jones and said, I would like to play football again. You, you bring them back, and you see if he has anything. Witten is gone. Blake Jarwin is back with a brand new contract. There's 166 targets vacated between Randall Cobb and Jason Witten. That's a lot. Since the year 2000, Blake Jarwin is one of seven tight ends who have ever had a or who have had a game 
of 100 yards and three touchdowns. The dude can go off. He can absolutely go ham. And the tight ends that you're dra- selecting from, if you punt, you can't say that about all of them. He's going to be in an up-tempo passing offense, an offense that is complemented by a horrifically bad defense. They're going to have to throw the ball a ton. And Blake Jarwin, as much as I like CeeDee Lamb, like in the range of outcomes, Blake Jarwin could be the number three target on this team. All right, let's talk about the Giants. Four and twelve last year, two and five in one score games. It wasn't pretty. There were some moments for uh this offense, Daniel Jones, some fantasy relevant moments. But Pat Shermer is gone. Joe Judge, the new head coach. Uh he was the wide receiver and special teams coach for the Patriots in twenty nineteen. Jason Garrett just uh, you know, down the line in the NFC East. He's now the offensive yeah. coordinator. Yeah, he's there. And uh Okay, he's there. How do we feel about the arrival of Jason Garrett, the new head coach, on uh, the fantasy-relevant pieces here? I mean, Saquon Barkley, unequivocally, capable of being the number one overall fantasy yes. running back. But beyond that, there's just question marks on this team. There are a lot of question marks, and it's really it really comes down to what you believe in Daniel Jones more than Jason Garrett. I don't think Jason Garrett gets enough credit. He He's so easy to mock with his – gentle clapping at bad <laughs> plays you know it's like oh this was this was a bad play it's okay i'm clapping you know it's he's easy to make fun of but he's garrett he's, i just threw a pick six yeah no, no oh good job good job we'll get him next time champ um yeah so you know but i think he's actually pretty good uh, saquon it's nice to have someone come in that's coming from zeke to Saquon. yeah we don't have to worry about that <laughs> you know you know he knows how to utilize a workhorse back so that's good so the receiving options you can put him in a little, you know, uh, just a roulette wheel and yeah. pick your favorite between Shepard, who I think is the best of the three, just legitimately NFL wide receiver. So I would take him first. The upside of Darius Slayton, the rookie that came in with a rookie and Daniel Jones, showed some big explosive plays. And Golden Tate, who once he came back from suspension, got past that first game, was the best of the three last season. So I don't believe in... Daniel Jones taking a huge step forward. Neither do I. And I know Mike does. I, I have my concerns about Daniel Jones taking a step forward because of Jason Garrett in part. Last year, Kellen Moore coming in as offensive coordinator was the key to the attempts going sky high. Daniel Jones showed a propensity to make so many mistakes yes. in this offense. And when Jason Garrett wants to manage a player making a lot of mistakes and has the ball, he can give the ball to Saquon Barkley. It makes me wonder if you're going to see less of the gunslinger Daniel Jones and more of the game manager make this pick worthwhile Daniel Jones. Yeah, it, it's certainly possible. Why I like Daniel Jones is if if he hits his ceiling, then I, then Daniel Jones can be one of the best late-round quarterbacks over the last 10 years. Rookies that have actually played at least 10 games and averaged 250 passing yards, Andrew Luck, Baker, Cam, Winston, and Daniel Jones. It's a very, very small list. He was able to get the job done. Yes, he fumbled the ball a ton. Now, his interceptions, I mean, 12, that number is probably lower. Because, Compared to because his fumbles, of, it's perfect. I'm saying it, it probably would have been a lot higher had he not fumbled the ball <laughs> so many times. But That's the, 30 turnovers. But the uh, Oh, Jameis Winston says, what? what? <laughs> well, it's 23, but... It's, it's quite the round. I thought you said 18 fumbles and no, 12 11, interceptions. No, 11. Oh, 11 lost. Yes. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, 11 lost. 18 for fun, 11 lost. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's counting? These, I just get some back, they're just for fun. But seeing a rookie quarterback be able to get it done, we haven't even mentioned Evan Ingram, who before he got hurt, Evan Ingram was the tight end six overall and in points per game. Like Evan Ingram was a half a point a game per, behind Kelsey and George Kittle. Like Ingram, you, Ingram gets it done. Do you like the price on Evan Ingram right now, the tight end six in the seventh round, more than yes. the earlier discussion on Zach Ertz in the fifth? Yes, I do. Jason? Ingram is a much larger risk. Do you have enough confidence in the ri- the risk of Evan Ingram in the seventh? No, if I, if, I, if I was forced to take one of those two guys, I would go Ertz because while the upside, I think, is there, and it's cheaper for Ingram, so you can make that argument based on those two reasons – I'm going to assume that he gets injured again. 
I was going to say, it's, Mike's, it's, look, it's a fair bet. Mike's sentence about he was the tight end blank when yes. he got injured. I was like, which year does that apply to? Oh, all of them. All, all of, of the all years. years. All of them, yes. Uh, eight, 11 games started, eight games started, six games started. That is not the right direction that no. you want to go. Those three games are going to be hot. It will help Daniel Jones. Whatever, however many games it gives Daniel Jones will be helpful. Um, but, uh, you know, outside of that, it's a very difficult – Wide receiver core to select. Are you picking any? Let me ask you this: We're in the NFC East. Are you picking Giants wide receivers ahead of any uh, of the Eagles? You know, Deshaun Jackson. No. Are you picking any of these players ahead of Djax? Not ahead of Djax, no. Okay. So, and your favorite of the of the bunch, Mike, is Golden and Tate. Yeah, right now it's it's Golden Tate. When Jason, yours is Shepard. Okay. And yours? It's probably <laughs> Slayton. I think earlier Slayton. this offseason it was Slayton. He look, he can make big plays. That's I for might sure. be coming around, coming back around to Golden Tate though. When I think of trying to manage the turnover proneness of Daniel Jones, Golden Tate is a, a great friend. He was the wide receiver twenty one from week I six? No, you and your stats. It was touchdown dependent. Stats, stats, wide receiver twenty one. That's pretty good. That is good. And He's got a new game. It's when called Amari Cooper or Golden Tate. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about any any other question marks on that team, but I don't want to go too quick. I just They're, I'm just so eager to get into Washington I, football team. The only thing I would say regarding uh, uh, Daniel Jones, there are a lot of minds that I really respect in the industry that love Daniel Jones. As thank you, they Jason. have him thank as you. a breakout. And when I statted him out, I was I was impressed with where he landed, but. His beginning schedule, we've brought this up yes. before, but if you haven't heard it. Oh, it's Pittsburgh, Jason. It's, it's Pittsburgh, yes. And oh, then he goes to Chicago, and then he's, oh, good, he's back home against the Niners. This is a three-week stretch that is not good for passing offenses. So I, if you're drafting him late to be this opening streaming quarterback hope. It's fair. He better be your quarterback, too. I think I'm officially calling the bus for Daniel Jones this year. All right. Which, I mean, difference of opinion. That's all it is. Dude, the schedule mixed with Jason Garrett is all, you know. <laughs> oh, all right. He's not that bad. Yeah. I think that he could be. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I think it's a, t it's a tough division. Washington football team, 3-13 and 13 last year. They lost a lot, including their nickname. Mm -hmm. And here we are. Get it out of here. Uh, passing yards per game, 32nd in football last year. Hooray. 32nd best? Uh, correct. 32nd uh, nice. in points <laughs> per game. That's that's not good. And here we are with a huge question mark at the quarterback position. Dwayne Haskins probably gets more crap than he deserves. Tough he, situation. He did improve. Tough situation in his rookie year. I have leaned into that because I didn't like him coming out of Ohio State compared to some of the other uh, draft prognosticators. I think I've probably given him too much crap. He has a, a very, very talented wide receiver in Terry McLaurin. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's got a good head coach in Ron Rivera, somebody that I think can help manage uh, to move him forward in his career. They drafted Antonio Gibson in the third round. Yes. Uh, and for those that have not yes. watched college tape of Antonio Gibson, I encourage you to do it. Yes. Honestly, it reminds me a lot of when you went back and watched tape of Deshaun Jackson when he was drafted out of California and came into the league and people questioned the size of the guy. And then you go, wait a second, that's electricity on the field. He's going to turn a three or four yard looking play into a big time touchdown. That's what Antonio Gibson looks like to me. And because of the fact that there aren't a lot of weapons in this offense that we know beyond Terry McLaurin, there is opportunity there for, for, for touches to be manufactured. I still think they're going to try to protect Dwayne Haskins. I think, the, whether it's Darius Geis or other pieces of this offense, uh, you know, of the backfield, I mean. I think that they're going to be conservative, but I think it's not all bad in Washington. Yeah, oh. there's there there are rooms. There's there's there rooms. Are rooms. There, are, <laughs> there are rooms. There are rooms. Rooms That's available. Just, you're done. You're done. Uh, <laughs> there for, are rooms. There's, there's room for a breakout, but for the most part, I – don't want anything to do with this team that's not named Terry McLaurin. I mean, I you know you can take a shot Gibson late. I loved Gibson late. The problem is right now Gibson is starting to not go as late as what you call He's, late. He just keeps creeping up. And he, and that's he, the yes, Mike Wright effect. 
Okay, it, it's not just me who is madly in love with Antonio Gibson, but he's still not anywhere close to a range that I would say he's he's still a late round guy. Is he still in the double digits? Yeah, he's fourteenth round. Yeah, it's that'll that'll creep up. Hogwash. Yeah, look, Ho- I, every draft that I've done with real people lately, he's not fourteen. He, I, I, he's I, a last round pick or second to last round pick. I bet. He, I bet. Come drafts, he's going to be going in like the ninth or the tenth. Look, there's round, a there's a world and that's where, fine with me. Yeah, see, there's a world where Antonio Gibson is completely useless on this team. That running yes. back room we read about is is five deep, and there's no guarantee that he's productive. The biggest problem I have about look, I love Terry McLaurin. Just watch the tape. Terry McLaurin makes big time plays. Mm-hmm. That's not always enough. You, you, know, you want a wild Terry McLaurin stat? Well, yeah, I sure, Mike. All right. Terry McLaurin with Dwayne Haskins as the starter averaged four receptions and 65. All right. I'm sorry. Four receptions and 66 yards. Those first weeks where it was not Haskins, although Haskins came in, you know, twice when he, in relief, four for 65. He was the exact same player over the splits with and without Haskins. Okay, but but if you get 58 for 919 and 7, it's not delivering on the breakout. That's not enough. Right. 58 for 919 and 7 is not going to be enough. So if Dwayne Haskins struggles, that's not enough. I mean, we I sit here on the show. I talk about my worries about Keenan Allen and the, and the quarterback situation. Right. Keenan Allen is a better wide receiver than Terry McLaurin. It's oh, yeah. He's, yeah. he's a much more experienced, better route runner, better wide receiver, if I'm going to bet on anybody, I'm going to bet on Keenan Allen with bad quarterback play over Terry McLaurin. That's I, And this is not to throw any water on the talent of Terry McLaurin. It's just to highlight there's a variability in all players, right? It's the same thing yes. we look at Devontae Parker. He had a monstrous year last year. We look at him and we go, man, do we buy that big of a year with not knowing what the quarterback situation in the room is going to be? I have that same kind of hesitancy with Terry McLaurin. And McLaurin is a sixth-round pick at the very top of the sixth round. The wide receiver, 24, totally fair price. No problem with that at all. But I just see a pathway to being disappointed. When when you stat these players out and you look at, you know, uh, probabilities of how much passing volume and where the targets go, that's where Terry McLaurin shines because he is the the primary alpha within this group. You know, Steven Sims Jr., Trey Quinn, they, they aren't – Going to get the targets. Right. That's where Antonio Gandy Golden uh, Jason sh- sure. have some Gandy. Have some Gandy. <laughs> um, uh, you know, that's my, you're speaking my point here is that he is going to be the leader in target market share. That's why he's higher in rankings because you've got a guy who's going to get targets, who can get deep, who can score. But to Andy's point, you know, I compare him to another. Obviously, you know where where I stand on Hollywood Brown, but these are both really fast, really deep route running, good quality young wide receivers. Well, one of them has Dwayne Haskins throwing him the ball, and one of them has Lamar Jackson. So it's crazy to me that it's always Terry McLaurin that people want over Mm -hmm. Hollywood when it's like, if you look at these situations, who has the better chance to really explode and, you know, have 1200 yards and 10 touchdowns can Haskins support that I would say yes AJ Green or Terry McLaurin Terry McLaurin Terry McLaurin I figured you'd both say that. <laughs> thanks for the softball <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I think uh can I can I get the guarantee that AJ Green's gonna be healthy no okay <laughs> I, I was just kidding that doesn't exist uh Darius guys he's my pick out of the backfield uh, warming, you know, RB 34 right now off the board could be a run heavy offense, 23 years old, always hurt. If you take your shot at him in the eighth round, the late seventh round, it's interesting. maybe you've got a starter. Yeah, you, you might. And you have look, Scott Turner is the offensive coordinator for Washington. If he brings the Turner system, which is what was with Rivera in Carolina, right? Yes, and that's the one primary. You have one running back who is the guy for the vast majority of the snaps, and that is Darius Geist. Then that would be uh, very valuable for yeah, fantasy purposes. I, uh, he he could end up being great from this backfield, and and this is where I really hope they do move on from Adrian Peterson. Right now, I've got Darius Geist down as the leader of this. Uh, backfield but only with 175 carries because I've got Adrian Peterson with 130 if they move and they say this guy's healthy we're gonna see what we've got there move on from Adrian Peterson Geis will skyrocket up my rankings 
Any other sleeper value on this team? The Stephen Sims Juniors Stephen of the world? Stephen Sims Jr. and Jeremy Candy Sprinkle Golden. are the only two names that are like deep leagues, possible uh, relevance for you know a flex or a tight end premium, but I'm, I'm not really going after either of these guys with vigor. All right, so we are what Brooks? How are you doing over there? Doing great. Yeah, yeah. Did you having a meal? Apple salad over there earlier today. Earlier. Yeah. Today. Okay. Listen, we have one more divisional breakdown show. Is that right? Oh yeah. NFC West. Yes, sir. Oh. NFC best coming on third. It, it is though, mm. and that stinks. <laughs> it is awful. It stinks for the. If you're a fan of one of the teams in that division after the trade, I mean, we didn't talk about that trade. Jamal Adams to Seattle. Yeah, we'll we'll highlight that. On the no, next we show. won't. We're skipping <laughs> Seattle. I'm not talking about Seattle at all. It's not because my shirt has the Cardinals logo on it, I promise. Yeah. But NFC West on Thursday, want to thank Pristine Auction for sponsoring the podcast. They just launched their first ever sports card auction. So mm-hmm. Sunday to Sunday, nothing but sports cards, all sports, new cards, vintage cards, card boxes. Uh, my son and I have really gotten into collecting NFL football cards in the last couple of months. Uh, I, I know I've seen Adam Lefko out there with Gary V talking sports cards. They are a big deal right now. Check them out at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. That's right. You've heard as much Amari Cooper bashing as we could fit into one episode, got, but it's over now. I got some, it's some over. compliments in there for Blake Jarwin. See you next time. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.